the stock market hasn't been as insanely bullish as last year, but if you really want to make money investing in stocks, stick around until the end of this video and I guarantee you'll learn something new. My name is Michael Wang and in this video, I'll be talking about the stocks that major hedge funds and mutual funds are buying and selling. As with all of my other videos, this isn't financial advice. The content I provide on YouTube is only for educational and entertainment purposes. In the case of ETFs and index funds, fund flows can be monitored in real time by anyone online, so I'll briefly go over some of the hottest ETFs in the market, which are ARK Invest ETFs. During this correction, investors withdrew $465 million from ARK K, $202 million from ARK G, and $119 million from ARK W, which were all record amounts of withdrawal. And the short interest on ARK ETF also reached record highs at 3.5%. So what does this mean? Capital that had been previously allocated to high growth stocks and tech stocks are now moving somewhere else. And while this means that some investors are approaching the market from a different angle, this also presents an opportunity for other institutional investors to buy the dip, given that their investment strategy and thesis remain valid. For instance, Kathy Wood bought more Tesla during the 13% dip as RK slipped. So last week, all hedge funds filed their 13F, and let's take a look at what 820 hedge funds are doing with their collective $2.8 trillion. By the way, the $2.8 trillion I'm referring to is the gross equity, of which $2 trillion are long and $827 billion are short. Just to provide some context, hedge funds have a prime broker that offers brokerage services which are generally offered by investment banks. Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley have the upper hand in the prime broker market, and because most hedge funds are clients to these investment banks, they best understand hedge fund trends. And looking into the quarterly reports is important in understanding institutional investors' moves, fund flows, portfolio trends, and investment strategies. So in this video, I would like to go over four topics that could help you manage your funds and portfolio like a hedge fund manager. Please keep in mind that there is a time lag because I am basing this video on the 13F filings that were only revealed last week, but actually filed a while ago. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure to smash the like button right now, and I mean right now before you forget. Okay, so the first topic is institutional investors versus retail investors. If we just compare the returns not adjusted for risk, retail investors win. This graph demonstrates the retail basket index, which consists of the most popular stocks held by retail investors. This basket shows a 18% return, and hedge funds on average did about 8%, while the S&P 500 moved 4%. Now you might ask why hedge fund returns are so low. If we just selectively look at long short funds, the average return is well over 20%, with some firms even marking three digit returns. But the quant funds in particular were heavily affected after the COVID drop, which lowered the average return for all other firms. What's interesting to note is that there were 12 stocks that both retail and institutional investors had a huge interest in. They are Apple, Amazon, Alibaba, Disney, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Netflix, NVIDIA, Square, Uber, and Vitrus. These 12 stocks are all high growth, high valuation stocks. This graph demonstrates that the number of stocks trading above 20 times its enterprise value to sales ratio is at a record high since the dot-com bubble. Despite such numbers, both retail and institutional investors have made heavy bets on high growth stocks. The second topic I want to discuss are SPACs, or Special Purpose Acquisition Companies, led by hedge funds. As I mentioned in my previous video as well, we are seeing a record number of companies going public via SPACs. And while hedge funds are in charge of companies getting listed through their SPAC deals, they also invest heavily on other SPACs, stimulating fast growth. And as you guys also probably know, SPAC investments have become increasingly popular among retail investors as well. This year marked the top for SPAC trading volume 
and an average of 20 long short equity hedge funds are part of the top 15 SPACs. Their average returns just for January of 2021 were 28%, and over 144 new SPACs have been listed since then, which means that an average of five new SPACs get listed every day with over $44 billion in capital flowing in. Again, these are all stats from the 13F. So these are positions that hedge funds had at the end of Q4 in 2020. And because this doesn't necessarily mean that they're still holding their positions, don't just ape into these stocks thinking that you'll ride the wave with big institutions and make 30% returns monthly. The third topic I want to discuss are popular long positions by hedge funds. In the past 10 consecutive quarters, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, and Alibaba were the stocks that hedge funds long the most. Besides these, 13 other stocks that were popular long positions among hedge funds were these stocks. CCIV is a SPAC that is taking Lucid Motors public. For those of you who don't know, Lucid Motors is an EV company that is apparently going to become a Tesla killer. Shopify is also on the list as its stock skyrocketed after COVID. Square and Zillow, which are held by ARK Invest as well, and Slack Technologies, which is going to be acquired by Salesforce. Lastly, we can go over the leverage in short positions of hedge funds. The net leverage is at a record high, which means that the overall short positions among hedge funds are at an all-time low. The short interest for the S&P 500 at the end of January 2021 was only around 1.5% of the entire market cap, which is about the same rate as the historic low, which was around the year 2000. This doesn't necessarily mean that the market to date is like that of the dot-com bubble, but just that the bull thesis is more dominant in the broader equity market. If we also look at the long short trend among sectors, Hedge funds consider their positions in the IT sector underweight, but even within the subsector, there's some differences. Out of 13 subsectors in total, hedge funds actually increase their positions in eight of those subsectors like semiconductors and application software. Besides tech, they also reduced positions in consumer discretionary and financial stocks. By the way, when I say that they reduced their positions, I mean that hedge funds trim their long positions as opposed to shorting. Now let's take a look at what mutual funds are doing. Mutual funds don't use long short equity strategies like hedge funds. They simply adjust the weight of the share they hold in their portfolio in relation to the benchmark index. By the way, index funds or passive ETFs are not included in today's video. Instead of just thinking of what the top holdings are, try to think from the point of view of institutional investors. What are they buying or selling? Why are they buying or selling certain stocks? What does this imply about the overall stock market? The first thing we can note about mutual funds is that they've increased their exposure to value stocks. These are stocks that will directly benefit from the real economy's recovery after the COVID crisis. So they've increased their exposure to the industrial, financial, and healthcare sectors while they reduce their tech holdings. Comparing mutual fund holdings to those of retail investors, they have rated a lot of the stocks that are considered retail favorites underweight, especially stocks in the consumer discretionary sector. If we take a look at the sector rotation, we can see large cap mutual funds moving their focus from tech, telecom, and consumer discretionary sectors to industrial, energy, financial, and healthcare, which are cyclical sectors. So overall, there's been a transition from tech and growth and momentum to value. This is a matrix of a portfolio overlap that demonstrates long and short positions of hedge funds and overweight, underweight rated stocks by mutual funds. On the first quadrant, we have stocks like Bank of America, MasterCard, Square, and PayPal, which are all fintech and payment solution related stocks that both hedge funds and mutual funds are bullish on. Then we have stocks like Adobe, Citigroup, DuPont, Morgan Stanley, Cisco Systems, and Qualcomm, which hedge funds are bearish on, but mutual funds are bullish on. In the case of tech giants like Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and Netflix, hedge funds are long while mutual funds are bearish. Lastly, we have stocks like Boeing, AMD, Costco, Chevron, IBM, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, and Tesla, which both hedge funds and mutual funds are bearish on. So what do you think? Do their positions make any sense to you? 
Do you think that the transition from tech and growth to value is a wise move? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe for more quality content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.